Welcome to the Theatre of Others podcast. My name is Adam Marple and I'm the co-artistic director of the Theatre of Others. With the COVID-19 pandemic forcing a shutdown and re-evaluation of space and gathering, we at the Theatre of Others are thinking about what stories we need and how best we can share them. We believe space is psychology and it informs the way in which an audience interacts and reacts to what is presented to them. We create uniquely theatrical events in bespoke sensory performance spaces crafted to encourage curiosity and grant the audience permission to commune with the play. Now that that space has moved online, how can we encourage interaction and action amongst an audience virtually? The Theatre Brothers produces plays that both welcome and challenge the audience. We are committed to international collaboration and are a laboratory that helps artists grow through intensive study of their craft. The Theatre Brothers creates a shared community of artists and audiences for the purpose of exploring the most profound issues of our lives and times. We believe the play watches the audience. The audience is necessary and they are witness to what happens and you get to be witness to us making that happen. The purpose of this podcast is to open up our process and let you in. We're peeling back the curtain, so to speak, and encouraging you to follow along, to ponder, prod, and question, to join us and criticize us if need be. Being a witness is no passive task, and it requires much from you. Are you up for the journey? On the podcast today from Melbourne, Australia, our co-artistic directors, Woody Miller, and myself in Cairo, Egypt. This podcast contains explicit language. Hi, Adam. Hi, Booty. Booty what? Booty Miller. Booty Miller what? E putu booty Juan Miller. What? E putu budio wan aule takuma miller. What? Yeah. What? I, I don't know. What? What do you? What are you? What are you asking? What are you talking about? What is Mister E putu budio wan? No. no, it's not Ms. Mr. Ms. Often, but not today, <laughs> sweetie. I don't know. Please tell me. I'll give you one more guess. Um, I don't know. Are you a are you a CPA? Are you a MSC? I mean, I don't know what. Um... What am I? You are everything. Uh, I am. Everything. You are. <laughs> you are every woman. It's all I'm in you. I'm every woman. It's all in me. Guess what happened today? What? Guess. The world continued. Uh, the sun rose in the east and set in the west. Mm-hmm. Um, children were jealous? born. Is that the sound of died. jealousy I hear? You could you could be a little bit more supportive of my plights. Nine mfing years I have been supportive oh, of your plights. Hello. <laughs> announce it. What happens today, Adam Marple? Announce it. Tell everybody. You announce it. It's your journey and your struggle and your You have to introduce me into the room. You have to introduce me into the room. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Booty and Miller. non-binary conforming individuals. <laughs> introduce me. Booty, what, what did you do today? Booty, what did you do today? What did you do today? <laughs> oh, I just did a little PhD seminar. Yes. Yes, you did. How'd it go? There was so much love in that room. Like you said, it was like your wedding. It was full of all of friends and family. It was amazing to see Catherine and... Uh, yeah, Catherine, Catherine Fitzmaurice was there. Catherine Chris Fitzmaurice Bays was, was there. Chris Bays was there. It was, it was so amazing to just like see the, the gamut of people from Catherine Fitzmaurice to, you know, participants in Bali, from, from Bali this summer. Um, it was just lovely to kind of just be there and have everybody supporting you in that moment. It was, was really great to kind of 
um, yeah, to, to hear all that and see all that and culminate all of that and be done with it all. <laughs> and also, to, and also to yeah. see Kool-Aid and wine. I haven't seen anything from Kool-Aid and wine. So it was like, Oh yeah. You, got, you haven't seen the video? No, like negligence <laughs> or Hamlet. I haven't seen the video. Jack's seen the video. I gave you the video. You never gave I you the gave video. You the vi- Jack, did you get Jack, Jack, Jack sent us a message. Did you see, have you seen the video? Jack having seen the video doesn't mean that you gave me the video. I gave you the video. Where? Where did you give it to me? Oh, God. What does Jack say? I lost the video. That's what he said. See? <laughs> you lost so the Jack, video, too. So, so Jack has seen and lost the video, and I haven't seen the video. You had it and lost it. Where? Where do I have it? Where did you send it to? Where is it at? I sent it to... When I got it, I gave, it to you, I gave you access to it. Where? On Google Drive. I don't have Google Drive. You know, we share a it, Dropbox. Yes, you do. No, I don't. No, it was in Google Drive. Anyway. <laughs> What'd you think? what you saw? <laughs> well, it was... I, I don't know if it was just for me but for, or if it was for everybody, but it was uh, it was lagging. It was the video was lacking because you were sharing your screen over over Zoom, so I'm hoping it was just for me and not for everybody else. But um, I got to hear it at least, so and I got to see mm. my design again. I I didn't take any photos of it, so it was just good to see. Like, did that look as good as I thought it looked? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you like the animation? Um. Now, see that that part we all kind of missed a little bit. I mean, I think everybody kind of missed it because the volume, you turned up the volume about three quarters of the way through. And so, Mm. yeah, it's okay. Whatever. It's us, us having, us having seen it, us having uh, been a part of it doesn't mean anything because you're done (laughs) because it's, it's submitted and it's done. So that whole time limit thing was really like that. I was like, (laughs) it's a, it's a strict, 30 minutes and I'm going to stop you at 30. I was like, okay, well that, okay. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But, but like you could do this, you could do this on your own. You don't have to have them do it. And you know, the more important thing was probably what you were doing afterwards when we were gone. So this was a sharing, this was just a celebration. But if, you know, if you wanted to share this more information, obviously you have a lot more information to share just do that on your own. Don't worry about their, their time limits. Just, you know, well, what you, what you, thing, what you like, did afterwards was, was the important part. Yeah. The ticking, like the little ticking of the boxes and the submissions. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So you can call me doctress, her grand poobah, lady Royale. Budalina. Yes. One, one could do that. <laughs> You're not going to call me that? I- I'm going to call you Booty. Uh, you're my best friend. I'm going to call you Booty. <laughs> you can't call me Booty Doctor? I definitely won't call you Booty Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Pourquoi? Oh, my God. Speaking of. Adam, speaking of. Of, of okay, so you know how, doctor? like, <laughs> no, but not being a booty doctor, like, I said pourquoi, so that was speaking Spanish. So then it made me think of your Duolingo. Like, what, what, what number are, what number of days are you on for Duolingo? Uh, I don't know, 2000 something. 2000. <sighs> 2113. Okay. 2113. And remember the conversation that we had and I was like, you can add, you should add more languages. And you're like, no, I don't want to lose my, I don't want to lose my, my points, but you can actually add more languages. Yes. When you sent me Which that, I went has and been my it downfall. Oh, I'm sure. So now, I don't know why, I don't know why you decided to do this. I'm loving it. But the reason why I guess my downfall, I'm like learning like seven languages. 
I'm sure all effectively. Yes. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> so they, this is the all effectively. So the one language, one of the one of the one languages that I know, and it's not English. Don't even go there, Adam. Not Dothraki. English. You're learning Dothraki. You're doing like Klingon. You can, you can learn Dothraki. Yes, you can learn High Valyrian and Dothraki. You can learn. Uh, there's so many. There's there's Hawaiian. There's Navajo. There's real oh. languages. There's there's languages that are uh, disappearing. There are languages that don't exist in real life. I mean, there's, yeah. Well, I was ordering bread the other day from the French baker. Yes. So I ordered in French. Yes. And then I got home. And I looked at what what was in the back because Akshay, Akshay took I took I ordered it and Akshay collected everything, and I was like. Why are there two loaves of bread in here? He's like, because no, two loaves of bread and a, and a baguette. He's like, because that's what you ordered. I said, no, I only ordered one baguette and one and one loaf of bread. And he's like, no, you ordered two two loaves of bread. I said, no. I said, du pain. And he's like, no, you're supposed to say, uh, what do you say, un pain. I said, no, you're not supposed to say un pain. You're supposed to say du pain. And and I was like, he probably thought I said de pain. And then <laughs> the doctor goes, you need to go back to your Duolingo. Shade. 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 Mm. Now shade. You know, now you know how I feel. I know how to speak French. You don't know how to speak Spanish. Apparently, you don't know how to speak French to a French person. No, apparently, person. the French man doesn't know how to speak French. Yes, that is your typical he response to me. life. Everybody else is Because wrong. I said messy au revoir. He said messy au revoir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I had to. I, Adam, I laughed so hard because I was just like, "Ugh," because I literally, he literally wakes up to me learning seven languages in the morning. <laughs> hey, it goes, it goes, it goes from uh, Christina. You're next. I'm. I had to add Russian to it. It goes French, Spanish, German, Italian, Indonesian. And Mandarin, six languages. Oh, seven because I also do my my uh, ASL, my sign language. Well, you know they say as you get older, neuroplasticity changes, so it's important to keep on. You know that is literally why I'm doing it, Adam Marpo. <laughs> that is literally why I'm doing it. I mean, my grandfather did crossword puzzles. You're learning seven languages. You know, whatever it takes to stay young. <laughs> and this is what happens when you finish PhDs. You have nothing else to do with that part of your brain. So now I'm, I'm like, I literally, like, as I start to have, have freed up my brain, now my brain was like, well, so let's let's learn some languages. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's what your brain told you. Hey, now that we're finished writing this thing, why don't we learn seven languages? Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's my brain. My brain just wants to wants to burn. So, yeah, so I, it is it is for more, more plasticity mm-hmm. in my mind. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, Mama's not getting any younger. We are not. It's true. <laughs> it was so good, like having everyone there, because it was just like it was just like my wedding, and that's yep. what I loved about it. And it, was, it, it. It's like almost the exact same number. It's true. <laughs> yeah. it got, but it, it went over. It went over. So we had like almost ninety people there. Yeah, so thank really cool. you everyone for coming. It was. It was. It was. The best part about it was how decolonized it became. Like it was like so official, and like the the moderator uh, chair, she was trying to keep it at this uh, university official, blah blah blah. And and no, nobody in that room wanted to make one to let her have that. And that's what I loved about it. My people were like, "Uh, uh-uh, uh, that's not how we gather. Mm. That's not how we do it. You have to have my dad telling me that everything's gonna be okay." <laughs> Oh my God! Getting your family to turn off their oh. microphones. <laughs> oh my God! My- in the <laughs> midst of it, and not my fa- my favorite moment was my favorite moment was your mom going, "Oh, he's telling me to mute. I have to mute. He can hear me right now. <laughs> I'm interrupting his PhD seminar. He's having to stop to tell me to turn it off." <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> It was amazing. It was so, it was, it was literally my research. 
Like my my dad giving me lectures in the, at the top, telling me I had to be I, like you can't celebrate yet until you yeah. get done doing yeah. your doing doing your presentation, and yeah. then mom not knowing like if if she can hear me or see me asking for the password, yeah. I'm waiting for my mom to come on to begin, and then like and then it just became it just was just like the wedding, and it I can't tell you that kind of chaos as you know calms me. Yes. It, the other stuff makes me all stressed out, like that all the official, like, like, like institutional blah 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 makes me all aggro. But as <laughs> soon as it became chaotic, I was grounded. I was I was reading and yelling at my mom. You you were you you never you didn't miss a beat. And so then talk to mom, mom, turn off your microphone, mom. And so when you when the presence enters you and God is mom, stop it, stop it, seriously, turn it off right now, everybody. <laughs> Um, and then you go to when God enters you and the Topeng, <laughs> it was just, it was like you had it just, it, it was like you had written it. It was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I was like, okay, dyslexia. <laughs> I was not dyslexic in those moments. Mm. <laughs> Making sure my mom doesn't fall off the rails. Making sure my dad turns off his microphone. Make sure, and, and like, my brother and my sisters were there. It was cool. And yeah. all my students were there and colleagues. It was I was just like, wow. This has been nine years. Dr. Elizabeth DeRosa was there. Yeah. It was good. It was good, baby. Yeah. So yeah. So I wanna also thank y'all out there for listening to all of my puling and whining about getting this advanced degree. It's done. We did it, y'all. We did it, y'all. It's done. Mm-hmm. Yes. And let me be the model for you understanding that it is possible. It's possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. <laughs> and it may take you nine years, but it's possible. And I and I was thinking, I was talking to Akshay about this today. I was like, you know, I can't imagine having done it in any shorter time. Because, you know, Elizabeth, he's like, well, I'm sure Elizabeth has a lot to talk to you about you know since she recently got hers i said recently she got hers five years ago he's like five years ago i said yes that was when i was supposed to get mine done he goes oh i was like yeah this it's it's not recent for elizabeth Mm. (laughs) but boy i'm just really happy that it's over now i yeah i'm but it was really an incredible gathering it was it was a it was a very different way of having a PhD seminar. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And I it was, was focusing it, on that as well. It was it was very different, and it was interesting to see that the people who tried to host it uh, had one idea of what the gathering should be, and the, everybody else had a different idea of what the gathering would be. And yeah, yeah, yep. The person who tried to host it, they were the only one yeah. that didn't know what was going on. What the gathering was going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Deadly. And I just have to say, y'all, we did it. We let the institution know who the motherfucking boss is. You did it, y'all. And we and 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 because we're a community, the others are strong, y'all. The others showed mm-hmm. up and we were like, no, that's how that's not how we do it. Yeah. This is how we do it. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and and what I loved about it was like this book that you had us read, Adam, this last book in our book club that you had us read came at the perfect time for me in preparing for this, um, this seminar. Like it literally like, but because I feel like, I feel like, okay, wait, before I go into it, Adam, what are we doing today? We're finally on our last book, the end of our book club, our eighth month sojourn back into the books that have informed us as artists. Uh, we have reached the last one. This is The Art of Gathering by Priya Parker. Yes. Uh, yeah, this was this was my choice, and it's the the last of our books. That's what we're talking about why today. Why was it your choice, Adam? Tell us Why? Uh, well, we chose our last book we chose uh, was a non-theater book that inspired us as 
uh, I guess we said people just as people, not as theater people. And this one really, I mean, this, it, it may as well be a theater book, just like uh, I it am is bad a theater book. is a theater book. Yeah. They, they're, they're both theater books, right? We're theater people. Yeah. That's who we are. Um, and this has anybody who will read this will immediately kind of, and has worked with me will immediately understand why I chose this book. Um, it is about how we meet and why it matters and how um, just, just play, you know, the idea of play is not, is not enough to uh, we're going to put on a play. Why? And this is something that has been from the beginning of the podcast why are you going to put on a play? And if you can't answer that question, then all the other questions afterwards don't really mean anything. Um, and so the, the the question that is throughout the entire book is why are you gathering and how are you going to make tonight different than every other night? Because if you're just, because if you just say you're going to put on a play, then the audience will immediately default into etiquette, mm -hmm. immediately default into what they have always done before. And this is not going to be like any other night. And then there's just going to be, Oh, I saw a play just like I saw a play two years ago, just like I saw a play when I was 14. And it will go into the recesses of the mind. It will mean nothing. It will change nothing and blah, 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 blah. And it's entertainment. And entertainment is perfectly fine. But I imagine if you're listening to this podcast, you're not just interested in entertainment. You're interested in something else. So this book for me um, has been the first time I have ever seen a somebody lay it out and make a path and um, talk about how and why we can do that. So that's why I chose it. Well, I say, God damn, Adam Marple. God damn. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's, it's funny because I feel like, I feel like we, I'm, I'm starting to, to, uh, um, see how the books that you and I are um, moved by stylistically it's interesting because your books have slow burns mm -hmm. my books like to pop you at the top <laughs> yes because I always, when I start your books, I'm always like, oh, can someone please just get to the point? But then I've realized by the time I get into chapter four, that chapter one, two, and three were preparing me for chapter four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have to like actually like to read in order to read out of Marco's books. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You, you have to be a person who likes to read to like the books that I like to read. Yes. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. And because I've also been spending so much time on like, like, get the content, get the content, get the content, get the, get the content, get the content. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so when I get, when, when I get these books that you've given me the work, Get to the content. <laughs> I'm like, because the first couple chapters, I was like, I get it. I get it, girl. Okay. Uh, trust me. I get it. I get it. I understand. I get the why am I really gathering. Yes. I understand closing the doors. Yes. Which Don't is which a show it, host, I but, guess. But, but see, yes. that's interesting. But that's interesting because we did an entire podcast about closing the doors, and and you were like, mm, "No, I mm -mm. remember, remember that." Do you remember that podcast? Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. The the, the what do you, you know? I, what what is it called? It was called. Um, I think it was purposeful exclusion. Like literally, Thank I, you. I wanted Purp I, purposeful exclusion. Yeah. So. Closing the but see like closing the doors and purposeful exclusion. The way that she explains it, because it the way she explains it are outside of any other gathering that I would be gathering people for. Mm -hmm. Like you wouldn't you and I get it that you can't be I can't be all things to all people. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. And um 
And I think that that's what that's what happens to that that you know go hit it's like I hate but I I I I I I veer off into my research as well. It's like when people are like, well, you know, so it should be this, and I said, no, it's not that. Like I I really loved um, Elizabeth's suggestion around um, the way I would the way like my box theory of like she goes, well, you you. You use, uh, you, you're calling it a box, but isn't that you know already closing someone off by by saying box as opposed to saying opening? And I said no, and, and the reason why is because we are constantly trying to open all kinds of different box and gateways and windows and pathways and and channels, and it's to say that like you know. I'm I'm in an open box. It's like oh, it, it, but it's not looking at the truth, because you're not open. And then it becomes this like ideal that you're trying to achieve. So I think it's the same thing as like trying to like please everyone, and or even you know giving trigger warnings, giving an entire you know tome of trigger warnings before someone even enters the theater. You know that's why we had the trigger the trigger menu for mm-hmm. our show. You know just because I had to do it because it was a it was a university production. Yeah. But we found a way to do it that made sense for us. That stayed within our closed doors. Yeah. So yeah. I think I think for me, I would say closed doors is to meet the aesthetic of the gathering. Yeah. And not everybody, you know, if if you had your own way, as we talked about at the beginning of this, um, there would be people that you didn't invite yesterday. That's not that's yeah. not the gathering that you were wanting. And, oh and... wait, that was yesterday for you. That's still yes. today for us. I was like, yes. yesterday, yes, 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 yes. Well, and the other reason, and also the whole reason why I didn't do it in public, right? I I would be at a, t- I'd be so unsafe if I had done it in public. Yeah, I wouldn't would have had be... anybody in that be... space. No, it would be a very formal affair, like most. I imagine, like most PhD seminars are. Instead of what it became, which was a celebration, which is because yeah. because whether yesterday was successful or not wasn't going to mean that you didn't get your PhD. So why have this last speed bump to get over not be a celebration, not be yeah. a a a, a, a uh, stand in for the entire sense of this research and the entire uh ethos of what it was you were researching. I don't understand the, you know, go and stand in front of a panel behind a table and, you know, give a TED talk seminar. Like that's, that's not what this is. And so but TED talks are it's interesting. Most of they, these things usually are really fucking boring. Yeah. I mean, I shouldn't say TED talk. I should say maybe a corporate presentation. It, there we you know, go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But that's yeah, not what's so, that's not that's not the gathering that that you wanted to have, and so that's not the not gathering, the that, gathering that I wanted to have. Yeah. It was not the. I, first of all, I understand what my safety means to me, and I, 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 and this is the other thing. It's like you know, your triggers are your responsibility. Mm-hmm. I knew that if I would have gone into that school, I would be triggered. Just because, yeah. of, you know, going into for admin, I get triggered, let yeah. alone going into the, the the building that has caused so much d- trauma in yeah. my life and many other people's lives. No way. I don't need to be in that shit no more. Fuck yeah. that. Yeah. And but what it did was it opened up my actual real community is which is a huge international community. Exactly. Yeah. People from all over the world were on that call. Yeah. And it was a representation of my people, yeah. you know? And so I, I couldn't be anything but grounded and mm-hmm. full. You know, like I, like I said before, as a dyslexic, I, I, I didn't feel dyslexic at all. I was in control. I was, with, I was with my people. So those closed doors that I had created for my gathering were necessary for me to have the kind of party that I wanted to throw. Yeah. It was so, it was, it's interesting that um, one of my, I've been thinking about this a lot because I was, I was, I was just quoting it actually. I think I, in the, um, the document that I sent you, uh, the director's statement, I even kind of quoted it. Uh, Hold on, I'm going to find it. Uh... (laughs) 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, we're t- talking about etiquette. Talking about etiquette and uh, pop up. That was my. Maybe it's here. Um, in a rules based gathering, the behaviors are temporary. Whereas etiquette fostered a kind of repression, gathering with rules can allow for boldness and experimentation. Rules can create an imaginary, transient world that is actually more playful than your everyday gathering. That is because everyone realizes that the rules are temporary and is therefore willing to obey them. If etiquette is about the one right way, pop up rules make no such claims. They are free of the ethnocentric, classic pretensions of etiquette because the rules they enforce are made up. Their impermanence is a, is a sign of their humility. And that, and the kind of um, default nature that, that, you know, this is a PhD seminar. It has to be like this, except mm-hmm. nobody else in that room knew what a PhD seminar was, but they knew who you were. And mm-hmm. so we all showed up for you. And so mm-hmm. that gathering then became how we would be if we were all in a space together or how the Balinese would do a PhD seminar. <laughs> That's what I actually think. And also, and yeah, exactly. And also it's, it's a per- perfect example of my research of decolonization and autoethnography. So mm-hmm. it's through me, through my body, through my intersection that you get the research. And that's how everyone showed up because they knew exactly who was, who they were coming for. And they, and, and they all contributed and everyone in that room contributed to the research. That was the <laughs> coolest thing. Yeah. Almost a hundred people who contributed to the research were in the room. Yeah. And so the institution were just like, you know, like bystanders. Yeah. Which I loved. Which I loved. Yeah. You know? And I think I I, I think the etiquette also the but the there was etiquette. There was there was the theater of others etiquette, which yeah. is come as you are, do as you do. Everything's just fine the way it is. Yeah. Which was a was a perfect example with my father. That's exactly how my father is. Yeah. You know when he started when he started coaching me the top, I I <laughs> was I was rolling inside. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think he thought I was gonna cry. I think that's why he started coaching me because I was yes. like, "Oh my god, this is so good! I'm so happy!" Because like, okay, stay focused. Yeah, you you said <laughs> you like... said you said all oh, all my people are here. I'm gonna cry. He's like, "No, you're not. Not yet. Stay with it. <laughs> <laughs> Get a hold of yourself, lady. Yeah. Get a hold of yourself." <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, my father. Yeah. Okay, so I also. And it's interesting because I originally was looking at the Never Start a Funeral with Logistics, mm-hmm. and I was actually approaching the the presentation in that way. And I did, I did a, a mock up presentation for Leon uh, um, because he's in Spain right now, so he's not, so he he wasn't going to be able to make the the um, the seminar. And he's he's you know he's also my go to when I have to deal with institutional stuff and like organization and stuff like that. And like he was, he was the one who suggested that I give the logistics at the top because he was like, "Hoodie, there's gonna be a lot of white people in that room, a lot of white academics in that room, and they don't know what they're gonna do, and you need to let them know how to listen to your thing because I don't want you to, to miss a beat in what you have to say. I want you to make a lot of people uncomfortable." I was like, "Okay," and he, and he was the one who said, "Spell out what you're going to talk about, so then like they can listen for those key things." So I think that worked quite well. So, so for me, I feel like that was kind of like almost like what she talks about when you like, you know, the the um the party begins, the gathering begins when you when you announce that the gathering is actually happening. Yeah. Yeah. So in that way, like having Leon be my first audience. I trust his take, even though he put it in the framing of like, you need to have a framing so that you feel supported and that people are going to hear the points that you're making because they're really strong. That because he's my audience, I knew what to, you know what I mean? I knew how to do it so that my audience would also get the benefits of those kinds of uh, details as these are the rules of the game that we're going to play. 
people can't play the game if they don't know the rules. Yeah. Because if they don't know the rules, they will default to the rules that they have experienced before. The etiquette. Right. Yeah. Right. Which would be sitting there and mm -hmm. being good listeners. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite part of this book? For the longest time, the thing that I've been trying to do with an audience, I thought it was just, I was looking for who else is doing this? Like, I mean, I know there are theater companies and there are certain directors and friends of mine who do parts of what it is that I am interested in doing, but I was like, surely I can't be the only person who has thought about this. And then I saw this, I, I read this book, fell in love with it instantly and thought, well, yeah, okay, this is probably 85% of what it is that I'm trying to achieve. But she mentions theater one time in this book. Um, so all of the book is is great for me, but I think my favorite chapter is um, create a temporary alternative world. That Can you chapter. elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean the it's the the Passover principle that she talks about. Why is tonight different than every other night? How do you create the circumstances wherein? we abandon our etiquette rules and there's a new place that has been created for us and we have landed on the planet of mars and the physics are different the gravity is different time works differently and unless it is set up that way everybody will enter the event as they have always entered an event and so it is the invitation to come into something else how, how do you how do you create the liminal space that you leave yourself behind and enter into this event um, new and fresh? I am leaving today to go to basically the the Burning Man of Georgia. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going camping this weekend. I'm going to Burning Man, and there You're is going to Burning Man, the Burning Man of Georgia. Yes, there's. I mean, it's not. It What's is the not Burning Man of Georgia. It's called Alchemy. And it is basically the same principles. It's, 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 there's going to be a giant effigy at the end. There's just free is a whole society is kind of created over the weekend. And so there is, they, they talk about there is before you get here. And then there's a moment when you step forward and you're in this new thing. And it's a temporary Why are you just world. Not telling me this. You just told me you were going off the grid. I'm going off the grid. But you Today. didn't tell me that you were going to Burning Man. Well, here we go. I'm announcing it to you. Why are you hiding things from me, Adam Marple? I'm not hiding. You've been a little busy this week, and oh, this was I have this been. this just well, popped up. So, where did this? The, was did you find this online, or did someone suggest it? A friend, yeah, a friend. I went. I had I had lunch with a friend uh, on Sunday, and they invited me, and I, I thought, yes, I need this right now. This is great. Yeah, you do. I think so, this is good for you. So it's yes, really good for you. So yeah, that I mean, there is. I mean, Burning Man is a, a perfect example of this. There is nothing; it's literally a desert, and then an now entire it's mud. Well, now it's just mud. Yes, but but an entire society <laughs> is there for a week, and then it's all gone again. And it's you know, we're not in the desert; we're going to be in the woods. But same, same. Um, and <laughs> what does it mean? You know, again, um. We use the example that she uses in the book as well, but we've talked about it plenty of time, plenty of times. Um, sleep no more. The idea yeah. of walking from outside where you are just you, and then you put a mask on and you walk into mm -hmm. a space and you're somebody else. And there are different rules here. And for a little while you can go, okay, today I can be adventurous or today I can be curious or today I can be quiet or today I can be whatever, but because this is temporary and it can end, and because um, I am being asked to do something different, and because um, there there's not really uh, consequences for changing my behavior, then maybe I could do those things. Maybe I could be curious, and I could change my behavior, and I could be inquisitive, and I can be different than I am, and I can be open, and I can be listening, and I can be empathetic, and I can be... And that's what like sealed the deal for me. That's what I've loved about this book and the explorations I've 
continued since uh, first discovering it. I have two that that made me go, I love this. Yeah. I had a lot yeah. of moments like that, but I was just like, oh, I love this. I want to be there. And like when she had me go, when she was giving me the feeling of like, oh God, I would have, I would really love that a lot. Mm-hmm. The first one was the toasts. Yeah. Everyone give a meaningful toast. Mm-hmm. That was like, I, cause I could, I could see it. I could actually map it through. It's a, it's actually a form of like sat, the satsang toast mm-hmm. <clears throat> where people, you know, what, what, what was it something that they were grateful for or, so, uh, uh, or that there was an impactful moment, one impactful moment or something, something along those lines that yeah. and they were going to give, they were giving a toast to it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, as, and as, <laughs> is that the one where she gave her toast to her 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 uh, period party? Yes, I think so. To her mother, yeah. She gives a toast to her mother for a, a, for giving her a period party. So when she first started menstruating, she her mother and all her mother's fr- female friends they all gathered and and gave her this this big party for her first menstruation. And then like then it's like and by the way she's at the table, you know. So yeah. like. Like those kind, like that kind of stuff. Like, that's my that's my jam right there. Like, yeah. where it's just like speaking from your heart and giving a toast to it. That yeah. f- for me was that was one of my like, oh my god, I love this! I love this! I want to do this at every party I give. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second one, I w- oh, I wonder if I should make you guess because it's pretty. It it has booty screaming all over it. Should, should I let you guess? Uh, please, we'd be here forever guessing because there's so many beautiful things in this. So, I'm what? gonna give you one guess, and then I'll and then I'll go. What other thing? Think think booty. What's booty's jam? Um, Missy Elliott, um, Beyonce. Every once in a while, you're like a little Paula Abdul. Um, I don't know. Well, I love some I love some vibology. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Vibology. Just check the show notes and then you'll know. Vibology. God. You got the secret. You, da, 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 that da, da, da. song. It that is song the sh- longest. It shouldn't work. Dumbest that song, song ever written by a human that's, being. That song should not work. I mean, there's so many times that there's just dissonance and and, and I don't know. The... I, 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 I'm in a funky way. I, 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 I don't know how that song worked, <laughs> really. But like you, you, at the end of it, you're like, oh. She had a big old crazy video and everything with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My favorite, one of my favorite moments that made me go, oh, my, my, my God, I really want to do this, was The Box. The Box. The Box the showrunner for transparent right yeah yeah where they all tell them about, tell them about, tell they, them about the box don't, don't, oh, oh, they don't know about the box they don't know about the box <laughs> they don't tell know about, about the box, box. <laughs> i don't know if they can handle this box tell them about the they box. can't handle the box they can't handle the box remember <laughs> so the box was the showrunner would put this box in the middle of the uh, rehearsal space before they would start the day, and there would be this chanting ritual of the box, the box, the box, the box, and the, everyone would gather around this box, and the box was strong enough for someone to stand on it. And then when someone felt compelled, they'd jump on the box, and they'd speak their truth of whatever it was. <laughs> in that moment and it was it was basically a quaker meeting with a box yeah and uh, they would go on until the room was purged and they were ready to work and then as it would start to slow down and dissipate and no one else would and then people stopped going up then the show uh then the uh uh the ad would get up and give give the you know the call for the day and what they're going to do for the day. Yeah. And and they would do it with every show. So they had like guest 
uh, artists coming and, you know, uh, day players coming and like going, this is the best set. I, I wish everyone could do this, you yeah. know, and it's, it's so my jam. Yeah. It's so my jam. Yeah. You know, and the joy of that ritual space is what makes me so excited. You know, uh, Joseph Campbell talks about how ritual is uh, myth reenact and, and enactment reenacted, right? Yeah. And you know, and I know people have issues with Joe Campbell. There's there there are issues with Joe, but Joe had some really fucking solid um, research around um, comparison of myth and story and the ritual space. Um, and that ritual. It's so visceral. Just, it's just I can see it, mm-hmm. and the the element of, have, of of stepping up, stepping up onto the box. What happens to the body when you step up onto the box? Like mm. it elevates you, and you're elevated with with your peers in the circle. And it also what it does is it, it removes a sense of hierarchy of who's first in the call sheet. Yeah, but we're all working to tell this story together. And you have people going saying that uh, there was like a there was an extra that was like she's like in my real in my real life I'm a I'm a a, a surgeon and we 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 don't have anything like this I wish we had something like this you know it's like yeah you know and con- and this that like, human beings want to connect yeah yeah you know it's 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 not the same but our check in for rehearsal yeah. Of course, is exactly. is is a part of this. Our our meals together is oh a part God. of this. Oh my God! Tell them about my last check in. <laughs> Zero. I'd never heard you say this before. <laughs> Zero. I'm usually down. You know, I'm usually like a three. <laughs> I think there's been a time before I was like a two, but like booty, booty. I think it, it wasn't even it wasn't even your voice. It was like zero came out. Like it was just it was from the depths, from the bowels of your of your lower intestine. The word zero came out. It was, <laughs> and the look on everyone's face. Everyone was like, oh, it, it like woke. It was, what was interesting is it woke everyone up. Everyone was like, okay, booty's at a zero. Okay, I got a fucking. Sh- because you have you have you have said before I've been in the room with you many a times before where you've said I'm a ten and I was like yes you are and, I, and I'm a, I'm like I'm a three and they're like yeah yeah of course you are Adam but then you said zero and I was like zero that's a number that we can use and booty is that number not booty booty who's typically an eight and above I mean Adam if Adam said zero we'd be like yeah yeah, yeah of course it's a Tuesday Adam whatever but but booty is a zero. <laughs> why was i a zero adam marpo i had a good reason why i was a zero. you did you did you got your covid shot and so you were you were you know <laughs> you were hosting i got my booster <laughs> you were ho- you were hosting the, the 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 virus in your body as a they were having they were having a lovely little disco in your gut i was a i oh i was but i i did find i but see this is what i i love about acting it's like I love rehearsals where I'm really sick. I just got, I had some fabulous discoveries. I had some I, fabulous discoveries. I don't outside need to. of falling asleep in the middle of rehearsal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Adam goes, booty, booty. Oh, oh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, and, and, but that's like, I, I love that, that space can be held for, people in that way because i have never been i've never been i've never i've literally never had a check-in like that and i, I was like i'm and, and this is the, and the crazy thing was y'all kept forgetting to do your check-ins and check out so like can we have a check-in can we have a check out like and it wasn't like it wasn't like because you know you start you start like hallucinating and showing that like when you're like recovering from those booster shots i was hallucinating yeah, yeah. i was like I was like, oh, they all hate me. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was a mess. And I was like, and they're not going to fucking check in. I was like, why do I have to be the one to call check in? I'm the one that's the sickest person in the room. So I, ha- I had a whole, I had a whole monologue. I had some pain body everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and so then, so then when I said zero and everyone responded in that way, I was like, but they're gonna hold this shit. They're gonna hold it. They're gonna hold. It. They can. They can. They can. 
they can do it. They can hold it. Mm-hmm. And but I found a really great moment with Ritasha. <laughs> yeah. That I want to keep exploring. Because because I I started to realize I because I didn't get the I, sorry y'all, I actually didn't get to give feedback because I everybody was feedbacking and I was sleeping. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so true. Yeah. I I looked over and Booty was was this. If those are those who are watching the video, I am just laying down horizontal, and my you know, and and I think you, I, I can't I can't remember if you had your glasses on or not, but like you couldn't quite you couldn't quite tell if your yeah. eyes were closed, but like yeah. I know no, wait, you wait, wait. well yeah. I know you well enough to be like he's asleep, he's, he's asleep. not moving, he's not moving, he's asleep, yeah, and the thing is, it's like, like a, I mean, because of the, the glow in my eyes like that, yeah, exactly, the glare in your eyes, so you couldn't quite tell, yeah. so. So I mean, the, the script is the script is built. The script is built in in the fact that it's mostly the ladies, and every once in a while you'll have. I mean, you're you're very much needed at the top of the show, and then there's a couple of other yeah. places. But like, it was built that way because we didn't know what your schedule was going to be. But it's one of the, it's one of those moments where it's just like, I am so glad he is not the main actor this time because <laughs> this this rehearsal. So, the, ladies, just do your thing. He's not here. Bo- <laughs> Booty has left the building. Booty's yeah. dead. <laughs> Booty, Booty may have died. I may need to. I may need to text Akshay and see if he can go like nudge his husband to see if he has passed on to the next life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So those are my two. I love the box. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. Love. Love. Love it. Yes. You know and. And what makes me excited about that is that it says that there is hope in our industry and there are people that are trying to do the kind of things that we talk about in this podcast. It is possible. You can have an entire TV crew. Yeah. Working like this. Yeah. And I think that's also because of the you know the the nature and the the um the innovation of the of the show as well really cuz cuz what they also said that like after they would do the box they did some of the most vulnerable beautiful touching um work because there was no mask yeah in a in a in a, in a Chris Bay's way they they removed the public mask yeah So, was there anything that I'm like, mm, oh, yeah, okay. Yes? I just felt like, I felt the way that she finished the book was gimmicky. And I was like, girl. And it didn't even have, it didn't even taste good at the end. Yeah. You know, when she was like, I'm, I'm not going to give my thanks at the end because I don't want the party to that's feel like and done and seen. So I'm going to give my thanks now. And so then she goes to this long list of thank yous to all these people that we don't know. Yeah. And that we don't care about. Yeah. And then she goes back into her book to conclude and it's boring. It's dumb. Yeah. There's nothing in it. (laughs) It was just a fucking gimmick. Yeah. Which I love because it can't be perfect. It can't be because perfect. Because there were a lot there's a lot of things in there that are quite perfect. Yeah. There's a lot that's that's phenomenal and really and really lovely. And it's not just um it's not just the theory of things. I mean, she literally it, it, it does and you know, the first three chapters, three, four chap three chapters are, as you say, it's a setup. And then the middle kind of chapters middle two or three, four chapters are here's the philosophy and why you're going to be excited about this. And here's how you can do it. And then the last couple of chapters are, and here's the logistics, here's the nitty gritty of what you need to do. It, it really does go why, how, what, which is, you know, we've always yeah. talked about. And so that those yeah. last couple of chapters really are kind of like, Oh, I, there, here, here are tools. Here is a, mm-hmm. here's a way of doing this. And then it gets to that. And then it ends like that. And it's like, I was like, you know, but no. Yeah, because the other thing is like, I felt like 
I felt like the way I felt around um, the parties that with the tablecloth has to be a certain way and and all the rules around that, I was just like, I guess that's just not for me. That party's not for me. Yeah. That's not my party. And I at the end of this book, I was like, ah, girl, if I want... Because it, it, it made me not want to read those people more than... In general, you don't read them. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Because it was like, <clears throat> I'm trying to trick you now. Like, now they're really interesting, aren't they? It's like, no, they're worse. It's worse. They're, <laughs> they're even less interesting. So, I, you know me. I turn, I turn the speed up to three. <laughs> Let's just move this along. <laughs> and in conclusion, and in conclusion... <laughs> yeah 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 i read it yeah of course i read it it's mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. got it yeah that part yeah yeah, yeah. i've learned i've learned seven yeah. languages today yep <laughs> yeah <laughs> and in conclusion yeah no no that, that but i i i yeah i think um I think I really, and I, I actually like the cover of the book too. It's beautiful, isn't it? By it's the a, way, it's a beautiful cover. <laughs> yeah, it's really lovely. It makes me want to read it. Yeah, it's juicy. It's nice. It's, it's colorful. I like it. Yeah, yeah. So let's take a break. No, we gotta. We do this every single time. We have to rate it. Then we take a break. <laughs> I thought we rated it on the break after the break. No, we we we, we do provocations and then we when then we exit the podcast. <laughs> oh, and then we exit the and then we go home. Yeah, we go home exactly. <laughs> we, we punch we punch we punch the clock. We get in our cars and we we, we get on the four hundred five and head see you home. next see you see you next, see you tomorrow, Marge. <laughs> Thanks, Frank. See you tomorrow. Give my love to Betty. <laughs> Shamil Samazo has of pepper incorporated. <laughs> Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 There's nobody on this podcast that knows what we just did. Give us any chance, we'll take it. Give us any move, we'll break it. We're gonna we'll make, make our dreams, dreams come, come true. true. Living Doing in our it our way. way. Yeah. Nothing's gonna turn us back now. Straight ahead and on the track now. We're gonna make my dreams come true for me and you. Yeah. Laverne and Shirley, baby. Laverne and motherfucking Shirley. They both, yeah. Yes, honey. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, so. Okay, the ratings one through five. <laughs> yes. F- f- uh, for contribution to the world. Contribution to theater, contribution to the world, Con- our favorite, our favorite chapter. Contribution to theater, contribution to the world, our favorite chapter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do contribution to the theater. Theater. Yeah. Yeah. In three. Two. One, five, four. I could go. I could go four point five. I was I was debating whether it was going to be five or four point five, but yeah. I'm I'm incredibly biased, so I'll go. I'll say four point five. Yeah. I only say four because, <laughs> yes, a lot of it does apply. I'll go four point two. No, no, I I think that's I think that's good. What you were about to say because. That's where I come in, and that's what my research is, and that's what my yeah. PhD would be on, and that's what my book will be about. So, yes, you're right. It's oh, it's somebody, is somebody getting a PhD? Yeah, they did today. They got a PhD today. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> I might. I might. Mm-hmm. Somebody's getting a PhD, y'all. Maybe. Um, okay. So a four and a five. Yeah. Uh, All right. I'll say 4.5. 4.5. Okay. <clears throat> Contribution to the world. Yes. Three, two, one. 4.7. Five. I think we need. Only think... because that last, only because of that stanky last <laughs> end of the book. Granted. 
Understandable. The end of the book was a stinky poo. It it wasn't a stinky poo. It just it just didn't live up to the amazing promise. <laughs> I take promise. three points away. I take three points away for that ending. It just it just didn't live up to the amazing promise that the rest of the book did have. I mean, it was like. Yeah, I have to take three away because that's gaslighting. It's <laughs> not what that word means, but okay. Do I smell gas? Yes, it's the end of this book. <laughs> okay, what's next? Favorite chapter. Favorite chapter. Mmm. <sighs> While you think, I will, I will talk. Um, <laughs> my favorite chapter, and probably the, <laughs> probably the most applicable for anybody listening to this podcast, is creating temporary alternative worlds. I mean, that is literally that was what we do. That was going to choose, yeah. That's literally, the, that's literally what we do when we create plays, is create temporary alternative worlds. But unfortunately, we mostly focus on creating the temporary alternative world over there on stage. And we have to f- remember mm. that the audience is a cr- temporary, creative, uh, temporary alternative world, and the lobby outside of the theater before you even enter into the uh, auditorium, the audience space is also a temporary alternative world. And also the marketing, how people engage with it or find out about it is also a temporary alternative world. So uh, I think if you can expand beyond the idea that theater is a play, but that theater is the centralizing focus, that the play is the centralizing focus for what theater actually is, it actually opens up and becomes really quite beautiful and tangible and contemporary instead of this 19th century idea that we've just kind of kept going on for so long. Yeah. Yes. So if you're going to choose f- chapter four, create a, create a temporary alternative world, I'm going to choose chapter seven cause good controversy, baby. Yeah. 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 I think that was, I think I love that. She says that, just because you're trying to have a strong gathering doesn't mean that you don't you don't touch controversy. I was even like I even got like defense defensive van ganglia when like she was like uh, we learn to not talk about politics, religion, and what was the other one? Uh, politics, religion. There was a third one. The death. No. Something I can't remember, but I just know that I got defensive ganglia around um, politics and religion. I think that's the reason why I remembered yeah. it. It's like <clears throat> I don't want to talk about religion or politics at a at a gathering. <laughs> if that if if it's in this chapter, if it's in the chapter for controversy, right? Yeah, I don't want to. That's how, I mean, like, what's the framing for that? Especially if we're gonna have like. <laughs> Closed doors. Yeah, but but you know this. You can't divorce spirituality or politics from what it is that we do. Correct. So but if, if talking it's ar- about it, but if it's already going to be you in those situations <clears throat> that I got into with that in the dog park. Sure, but you, but you, but but there was no frame. There was no point of reference for it. There was no frame. There was no. Um, there was no. Uh, anything set up about it it was it was a conversation that wasn't a gathering <clears throat> that was a that was a temporary conversation that was a dialogue and it wasn't even a dialogue in singapore probably. that'd be considered a gathering <laughs> well yeah in many countries in egypt it would also be considered a gathering and you would be you oh would be, really egypt too oh yeah it's they're even worse you can't you can't i mean protest and whatever i mean they're, they're worried about another coup they're worried about another you know whatever but in terms of in terms of like just being with other person in that moment, that's not a gathering to purposefully gather and to say in this purposeful gathering, like Thanksgiving is a purposeful gathering. But then Mm. when you let your weird uncle talk about politics, that was not the frame of this device. That's because you didn't host it. You became a chill host and you said, Oh no, we're just going to get together and eat food versus, okay, but why are we getting together on this day to eat this particular food with these particular people? Well, if I think about it and I create a scenario, do I really want my weird uncle at this party or do I want my friends who are actually my family, who I actually feel that way about? And if we're all going to gather, why are we gathering? Because we want to celebrate the year, but why are we doing that today? Okay, it's Thanksgiving. 
let's talk about giving thanks. Let's talk about how this year did for us or whatever. And if we're going to do that, then we have to include politics and we have to include spirituality. So how do I frame that in a way that doesn't allow people to go on a diatribe soapbox about politics or religion, but in a way that can say, for me, this is how politics affected me this year. For me, this is how spirituality affected me. It's not proselytizing. It's not campaigning, but politics affects us and spirituality affects us. Yeah. And see, this is where the challenge for me comes into play because so many people aren't talking to each other. So that isn't even a cultural etiquette. <laughs> there is no etiquette around it. It's like the politics. And uh, I'll trust. Uh, so this was also written before all, all the world fell apart. So yes. I wonder what she would write. In, and I wonder what she would have to say about the current state of the world today about talking, how she would feel about bringing, bringing in, you know, good controversy around politics and women's bodies or, you know what I mean? Like if there's just so much fucked up shit now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's part of my provocation. So, <laughs> oh, get an abortion. <laughs> get a vasectomy. <laughs> For sure. Yes, that is that is part of it. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, well, let's let's have uh, Jakina um, set the mood for that. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, and non-binary conforming individuals, you're listening to the stereo sounds of J. D. B. Jack David Burmester. Got a new attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Adam Marble, we're at provocations. Do you have a provocation? I got three provocations. Oh shit! Um, okay, come so, on. So, so number one, to kind of go off of what you had just left us with before the break, uh, Priya Parker had a podcast over the pandemic, and it was um, it was New York Times. Uh, in partnership with New York Times, is called the Together Apart podcast, and it was. I thought it was great when it that it came out when it did. Uh, they asked her to do it because how do you gather when you can no longer be in the same space with people? And it's and there were no rules, and we were all just experimenting on Zoom. How do you have Thanksgiving mm -hmm. when you can't get together with your family? How do you have Passover when you can't get together with your family? How do you? Um, you know, and there was a lot of experimentation and there was, we were all failing gloriously for a year and a half. Right. So this podcast is, it's very similar to this book, but it's, it is obviously more geared toward the pandemic and talking about the controversy and the pain, the trauma that we all experienced in that, in that time. Uh, so check that out. It's called the together apart podcast. Uh, my second, uh, provocation is if you could you just pulling books off your shelves if you like if you like uh this book and i think everybody will like this book because how do you not um oh it's not a very good cover i might i would say like book two of this is this book right here that's upside down oh, so i can't read that unreasonable hospitality by will gadara so this is um in a lot of ways, I think, I don't know if it's better. I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say it is better, but it's really, really great. Like a part two of what this book is. And Will Gadara was the, um, was the manager, uh, the manager of uh, 11 Madison Park, the best restaurant in the world. And th they didn't get their three Michelin stars just because of the food. They got it mostly 
I'm saying mostly, but they got it because of their service. And if you've seen The Bear season two, uh, this book heavily influenced season two of The Bear and especially Richie's journey. He actually is reading this book in his um, in his episode. And if you if you love The Bear like we love The Bear and you love Richie like we love Richie, like this is a this is a gr- really great book. Uh, so that's provocation number two. Provocation number three is watch this space. Um, I, I, I haven't quite decided if I'm doing a PhD yet, but I am uh, creating something called audience making. And so these two books are very, very influential to me and our work. And um, that's what I'm focusing on going forward. So just want to drop that there, that that's going to be happening. That's what I'm doing. Those are my provocations. Booty. I say, God damn, Adam Marple. <laughs> yeah. You've been planning. I've been planning for a while. Now I just have a name for it. What's it called? Watch this space? Audience making. Oh, yes. Yes, you do. You do. Look, I don't think I have any provocations because those are so good. I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get in the way. F- oh, Fud Mutter was in that in the book too. Pud Mutter, Fud Tough Fud Mother, Putter? Tough Mother, Tough Mutter, <laughs> Fud Mutter, Fud Ruckers, Fud Ruckers was in the book. Tough Mutter. Remember, we almost did a Tough Mutter. I, w- I was not me. Never. <laughs> no, never. We almost never. did. Oh we al- wait, we almost oh, did. Oh wait, that Remember? was when I was crazy. Yeah, when we were doing CrossFit, we almost signed up. That for That was tough when mutter. I was crazy. That's right. Yeah. But then I saw the electrocution thing. Yeah, that was. That's when I also saw the electrocution <laughs> thing. I said, "Nah, f this shit." <laughs> I was like, "No, thank you." <laughs> prowlers are enough. <laughs> yeah, prowlers are enough. I got to walk some stairs, so that's I'm done. Oh my god. Um. So yeah. So I think I think those three provocations are really, really, really strong. And I've already begun the uh your second provocation. No, the first provocation. No, the second provocation. Second provocation. The unreasonable <laughs> hospitality. Unreasonable yeah. hospitality. Yeah. Got yeah. it. I already have it in the library. Good. So that's my provocation as well. So I'm going to read that. <clears throat> well, as, Adam, as, how would we know? As, as Jack Jack just said, that's next year's book club. So, <laughs> but go ahead. Is and read it? it. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. But yes, how well, are they going to read this? A, I, I can read it slower because I have a feeling it's going to take me four chapters to get in. <laughs> Probably, maybe. But you've eaten there. You, you've actually eaten there, so you'll actually have some of those stories yourself. <clears throat> are you saying that I, I am a privileged bitch? I would never say that. I would only imply it. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? Why would you only imply it? Why would you never say it? And how will they know about this? Well, they'll go to speakpipe.com backslash theater of others. Speakpipe.com backslash theater of others. They'll leave a 90 second voice message there. They can tell us if they read this book or if they have even uh, book recommendations for us to read. Uh, you can leave a 90 second voice message there. We'll play it on air. We've not had anybody go to Speakpipe in months. Don't in know, months. We have a huge following and don't nobody want to talk to us. Yes, we have a we have twenty thousand listeners across ninety countries, y'all. Those are the those are the real numbers. Those aren't just like those aren't made up numbers. Those are real numbers. And of you people, you don't have a question. You listen week after week, and we're just just, they don't want to know nothing. They don't. They 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 like the they're just the flies in the walls. They're just the flies on the on the wall. There are twenty thousand flies on the wall. Okay. Okay. Fine. Maybe you know, we won't but maybe, bite. But maybe, but maybe speak pipe isn't their thing. Maybe they don't want to have their voices on. Maybe they want to write us an okay. email. Maybe they should write okay. us an email. Ooh. Go to podcast at theater of others. Yes, that's true. Com. That's true. Um, that's true. That's send true. us an email and, Again, and, if you, we'll read and, and, and send it to us in an, enough time that we can actually respond to you. Enough time. I mean, <laughs> we've had months since they have. Well, there's been plenty of time we can respond, and even even when they send things, it takes us a couple of weeks. <laughs> I'm about to we respond. Have to respond. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. It takes us too long to respond to questions. No, I don't think that's. Or feedback. I don't think that's the case. Or answers. Well, then you know what? 
then maybe they could go to our Instagram, which would be an instant response. Instagram, y'all. Yeah, Instagram, Facebook, our website will respond immediately to you. You know, mm-hmm. those of those of you who have our WhatsApp, you know, we could do that as well. And we, we could, again, we, we want we just want to okay, engage so with you. <laughs> we just want to talk. How with is you. WhatsApp? So, okay, so this is the thing. How is WhatsApp? Because Emily's like, I don't do WhatsApp. I don't. I've, I, I'm. In, I'm just managing my social media. But I'm like, I don't even think I'm like. That's WhatsApp not social media. Social media. That's not. It's so, a it's, messaging service. It's a messaging service. Yes, it is owned by a social media site, social but it media. is not. But it's a messaging service. It's a messaging service. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Emily. Did you hear that, girl? Put your WhatsApp back in. Yeah, I don't understand. Put your put your put your hearing aid back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. Anyway, the only way that they're going to know what we're talking about so that they can respond to us is if they do what, Booty? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hallelujah, subscribe. Subscribe, hallelujah. 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 Because you know what? We come into your inbox early, early. Mm -hmm. And mm-hmm. how you gonna know? How you gonna know who done got get in there? Mm-hmm. Unless you subscribe. And then mm-hmm. you could be like my Uber driver and give us five stars. Five star, five star. I five give star, you five star. star, you give me five star. Five star, five star, five star. Five star. Five star it's five a win-win, double win, triple, triple win game. One, two, three, four, five, winning game. Mm-hmm. It's a triple lut sow cow. Or what's the it's new a triple Lutz sow cow? Or what's the new move? <laughs> the the Simone Biles it, two, the Biles two. What is that? A, it's a Huey Newton. It's a Huey Newton and the news. <laughs> it's a Huey Newton and the news. Oh, cr- <laughs> <laughs> and if you really like us, you can leave us a comment. If you can't, if you want to give us more than five stars, you want to give us six stars. You want to give us seven stars. You want to give us eight stars. You want to give us nine stars. You want to give us ten stars. Mm-hmm. You can do it in the comments. And then when it goes in the comments, we start leaving comments. People go, oh, Lord. People leaving comments for this podcast? It goes into the algorithm. And guess what happens? We go from 5% to 1%. We go from being in the top 5% in the world to the top 1% in the world. And you know what happens when that happens, Adam Marple? Who do we get? Oprah. Oprah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Beyonce. Beyonce. Yeah. The Virgo. The Virgo. Not to be confused. And Michelle with, Obama. And Michelle Obama. Yeah. Exactly. But what about what about Taylor Swift? Okay. I mean, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not gonna. Kick is that, her out of bed is for that crackers. sustainable? Is that sustainable, like having Taylor Swift on, on the podcast? Why wouldn't that be sustainable? I don't know. That just doesn't sound environmentally friendly. You're saying Taylor Swift is not environmentally friendly? I'm not saying that. I said it sounds like it. <laughs> <clears throat> we love Tay-Tay. Um, is, that, is, that the, is that what they call her, Tay-Tay? I don't know. Are you a Swiftie? What, what are the know. what are Taylor Swift? What are the Taylor Swift fans called? Swifties. Jack. Oh, Swift. You how you know? I I still watch the news. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't watch the news right now. I'm I. I this week I, I have not, and I'm disconnecting even further this weekend. So it's very painful. I can't oh, take the, it. The world I need right the now. Aliens to come and save us. Well, I need, I need they, they, they they've looked at us and they've said no. Let's move on to the next. Galaxy. I need E.T. to follow me home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a really good time going off the grid. So when is that going to happen? Like, and as soon as we hang up, you're like, bye! No, as, as, as soon as we hang up, unfortunately, I have a meeting with Exeter to talk about. Unfortunately. Yes, because it's just meeting after meeting after meeting talking about this project. Because you are very special, and this is a very special project, and you are very important. And you know what? I love you. I love you too, buddy. Have a good trip this weekend. Thank you. Congratulations. Don't get eaten by a bear, please. Thank you. We don't. We don't have bears here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you do. You're an otter. I know. I'm sure there's a couple bears that are gonna be around. 
And for y'all next week, we'll be in your inbox because you've subscribed, right? Bye! Thanks for joining us this week on the Theater Brothers Podcast. Make sure to visit our website, theaterbrothers.org, where you can subscribe to the show in iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you found value in this show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or if you'd simply tell a friend about the show, that would help us out too. A special thank you to Purple Planet for the music you've heard. The Theater Brothers creates a shared community of artists and audiences for the purposes of exploring the most profound issues of our lives and times. We believe the play watches the audience. The audience is necessary and they are witness to what happens. And you get to be witness to us making that happen. The purpose of this podcast is to open up our process and let you in. We're peeling back the curtain, so to speak, and encouraging you to follow along, to ponder, prod, and question, to join us and criticize us if need be. Being a witness is no passive task and requires much from you. Are you up for the journey? Be sure to tune in next week for our next journey.